Let's say you're walking down the street one day and then you stumble upon a fight. You see this lean, relatively small guy with blonde hair and blue eyes and you watch him knock out some smaller blokes in his way. Then you watch as a slightly more top heavy individual walks out of the cafe and tells him to stop. You can tell that this guy probably had a few croissants as he's rubbing, wiping up the crumbs of his mouth while clutching onto a leash with the English bulldog. The blue eyed guy quickly sweeps in and punches out the bigger guy and then picks up the bulldog and throws him across the river. Then he notices 10 average looking men dressed in red, all in red, taking a glimpse of the fight with indifference, but he decides to walk over there and knocks out a few of them. Then while this is happening, a taller guy comes across the river with a lot of money, starts buying out all the armor and weapons that he could find and gives it to the bulldog, gives it all to the guys in red and then comes and attacks the guy in blue as well. And we find out his name is Sam. So basically what I'm trying to say is from the outset, a normal observer, anyone, a random guy in the street could tell you that Germany could not win World War II looking at the numbers. Uh, the German Army General Chief of Staff, Staff Franz Halder von Armen says, The Russian Colossus has been underestimated by us. Whenever a dozen divisions are destroyed, the Russians replace them with another division, or another dozen, taking on bigger and bigger opponents with a lot more resources. Sure, it's really quite miraculous that they did go quite far and beat a lot of these nations so quickly. Um, so I always considered them to be, Germany to be someone very skillful. Like if it was in a fight, it would be like the martial artists or the other people were brute strength or strong people who just worked out um, with weights. So I'm, I'm going to take a look at how much Germany was actually at gun from the start, from an economic standpoint, more so in a macro level at this stage, and then go more into detail with the tanks. Only the tanks in this one. I'll go through the other stuff a bit later. So what you probably saw in the video, you can see the GDP per country. You can see overall um, how much Germany is ungunned. At the top, um, you've got the British Empire with 744 GDP, France 130, Germany 1145, and you have United States uh, in 1941 almost eclipsing them. Uh, bear in mind, this is Germany with the countries they've overtaken, so you can see how they've kind of uh, gone bigger as the scale uh, goes further on. Um, then on the bottom left, you see the GDP per country, the axis in dark blue, totally almost only one quarter of the entire GDP of the other nations they're fighting. Land personnel, totally outnumbered, more than three quarters outnumbered. Warships, well, that's not even a blimp on the pie chart. You can see that in the sea, they had zero superiority. In the aircraft, uh, pretty, um, yeah, pretty much a quarter of that. And what's the other there? I don't know. Sorry, didn't classify that correctly. But that is the brief overview. Then you go to the land, you can see by tanks and SBGs, the equipment that was so important in the war, land wars, especially in Europe and in the East, Eastern Front Russia. Uh, I haven't inc really included, um, well, I did include Italy and Japan, I did. So <laughs> you can see um, even alone Germany, 67k, Germany cannot uh, um, outproduce Russia, outproduce UK for tanks, but couldn't outproduce the United States. So almost double uh, for, you, for the United States and Russia to the Axis. Artillery, they can't even beat anybody in the Allied team in production. Or you can see that only 0 0.07 million and the others, uh, wow, 50, 0.52 million. That's, wow, seven, seven, wow, seven times, more than seven times the amount of artillery produced Russia. in Russia. The United States is uh, pretty much four times Machine gun mortars, another another uh, one again where most of the individual allied states outproduced Germany, except UK, fairly even. Russia uh, is actually on par, so interesting. Machine gun mortars, they were able to keep up with the Russians, but not the United States. So overall, it's quite miraculously to think, looking on the paper, that they had a chance. Like, I think during the entire war, a lot of decisions were made 
because people like to think that the technology uh, of their nation, like Germany relied a lot on their technology of their machine guns, their tanks, their planes in certain points, which did help them a lot. And also, I guess, the individual skill of the generals and also the individual tankmen, such as the hero uh, Michael Whitman, who took out in Villa Bacarge, uh, took out 14 Allied tanks with this Tiger in about 15 minutes. But but really, it, that's, it's, it's at least a one-off outliers here and there where in this kind of war, the numbers are really, really matter. If you look at the air as well, um, Germany, Italy, Japan on the left, um, you can see those two combined can't outproduce Russia and UK for planes. And see the fight, the fighter side of it. Uh, wow, look at that! United States just totally. Imagine Japan going against the United States. Look at that: twenty-seven k to nine-nine k fighters, ninety-seven k bombers to to what fourteen k bombers. That must have totally out. They totally outnumbered them in the sky if they sent all of them to the Eastern Front. Um, and how many bombers are there to bomb Japan? That's probably why Japan got uh, firebombed so badly in the war. Um, so uh, that's the brief view of the t of that. Now let's go into the tanks because this is where I'm going to do most of my uh, analysis of in this video. Uh, you can see in 1938. Uh, on the left, this is the pre-war statistics. This is only the pre-war. So I've put everything uh, that was produced before 1938 into the 1938 bucket just for display purposes. So you know, Russia started the war with 26,444 tanks. Germany only 3,424. France started the war with more tanks in Germany. UK uh, lower. Another thing interesting or another thing you should note of UK I didn't have individual year stats for the tanks produced. I only had, I only knew when the tank was produced between the years 1940 to 1943, for example, and the total amount. So every single UK tank, I bucketed it um, evenly across the years it was produced. So it was 300 for, for 1940 to 1942. It's 100 in 1940, 100 in 1941, etc. So the first year of war, you can see Germany produced more than Russia. Well, 1939, there Russia wasn't actually in the war, but Germany kicked it off, um, kind of. With, uh, so 370, France was still outproducing Germany in 1939. UK, ignore that stat, but I think they were producing quite well. Um, 1940, uh, Germany outproducing France now, so they've improved their production capabilities, but obviously uh, French was taken over too, so it's only recording half of the years of French's uh, production there. Russia has uh, taken over now and eclipsed Germany in production. Um, probably that's one of the reasons why they were playing the appeasement with Germany, just letting them fight the other players while they build up. And that was probably their tactic. You, people kind of think, you know, why would the Russians trust the Germans? Why would they just sit there and and think they're not going to attack? But they're, they're playing a building game, as you can see. It's going up and up. 1941. Russia is almost double the Germany's production. UK following or oh, getting more than Germany and the United States already eclipsing. So pretty much every nation on the the major nations in the Allies are already are producing in tanks by 1941. Then 1942, you had the Russians well, tick up dramatically. United States as well kicked into mass production and that's probably all those T-34s, all those Shermans that um, are being mass produced by General Motors. Um, Germany um, slowly increasing, and you probably notice you see the as the years go by the actual increments go up exponentially because it really matters the production efficiency. If you played um, a game called Hearts of Iron, they have this thing called production efficiency where uh, the longer you build a certain tank, the faster you can build it in the future, and it. It's really true. Um, they kind of probably made that that uh, feature based on real life, because back in um, yeah back when they produced the T thirty four, I think the first year they produced it, it was costing them like two hundred and fifty thousand USD to produce one. By the second third year, it it came down. The third year, I think, came down to about hundred thousand USD, which was a uh, almost double the speed or double the efficiency of of that. Um, so well, in in nineteen forty three, you can see United States so. Oh, really cranked out those Shermans, I'm guessing. Uh, Germany going a bit up, but 1944 Germany uh, continued. So it's quite a steady climb for Germany. 
uh, US, United States dropped. I think they decided to, to do build something else or something because they had the capacity to do so. Russia um, dipped in 43 but came back up. So still outproducing Germany, Russia and um, Russia and um, the United States. United Kingdom is pretty flat because I, I smoothed out the production, but it'll give you the right total figure. Um, so during the whole war, you can see the medium tanks were produced most, then light, then heavies. And on the right, you can see the pre-war production. So this is per Allied tank. So for every Allied tank, how many were there per one German tank? So the pre-war uh, tanks, nine. <laughs> so for every German tank, there was nine Allied tanks produced. 1940, it slowed down a bit to 4.6, 41, 4.18. So it stays around the four for the first two years. Then 1942, 9.53, 1943, 5.64. Uh, it was a bad year for the Germans. 1944, 2.79. And uh, yep, 1945, the, the industry was collapsing and they lost the war. So 8.02. Uh, overall, on average, 5.3 Allied tanks per German. So if you're an Allied German tanker, you have to kill five, then you're, you're pretty much calling it even or just making it better. Mm. So that's the tank production overview of the time. Um, so let's take a look at the production comparison, I guess. Uh, this is the graph where you can kind of uh, compare tanks, I suppose. So first, let's just uh, look at the uh, French versus Germany uh, area and we'll go to the 1938-39-40s. This is the start of the Battle of France. So this is an interesting one where um, French <laughs> lasted only two months, May to June, uh, well, the end of June, pretty much, nearly two months. And the actual tank statistics at this time, at the start of the onset, I guess, of the production, it was a thousand more, pretty much, to French, to German tanks. Then 1939, still French was outproducing them, so they had more tanks to field. Early 1940 changed, but this is when the French lost the war in mid-year, so it's probably only containing half the French's uh, tanks uh, that are built. And also Germany uh, overtook French's industry, so they took over the laborers uh, for France and they produced tanks for Germany, I'm guessing, at uh, not 100% efficiency, because if you're a Frenchman, you probably wouldn't be working that hard uh, for your previous enemy. So you can see uh, in this in this battle between France and Germany, if you're only considering France and Germany, 1.1 Allied tank per German tank, which isn't a very bad discrepancy. You see value side by side, quite similar, almost a 50-50, 6K on each end, value per hull. Most of them were light tanks at this stage. The Axis vehicle KMs are 39 uh, KMs per, uh, this is road, so at the fastest speed, the average Axis tank could go that fast. Average allied 33, so this goes goes towards the Blitzkrieg uh, type mentality, even though the stat doesn't make sense, but it's pretty cool to know, I suppose. Uh, so let's click on the bottom chart, which I can sort, if it'll let me. So most of the tanks in this time, uh, so in the battle, you probably see, as a Frenchman fighting, you probably see a lot of Panzer 1s, and that's if you saw them, because the French kind of use their tanks differently. They use them more for infantry supports attached to battalions, where the Germans actually use the tanks for breakthrough, uh, breakthrough uh, operations to go blitzkrieg all the way and encircle things. So I don't think you had met that many tank versus tank uh, engagements, to be honest. But if you did, this will, this will be the theoretical. You'll see a lot of Panzer 1 versus R35s, uh, Renault FTs. Oh my god, right. this is many Renaults. <laughs> That's those bloody slow tanks added in World of War. Those tiny little uh, little ones that I don't go at... Uh, 1k per second, or 1k per hour, I mean. Um, so you had a lot of them. Panzer eyes, lots of, really at the start of the France uh, operation to Battle of France, sorry, um, there's a lot of German tanks which weren't very good, to be honest. They're, they're fast, decently fast, quite reliable. You had a lot of Panzer ones. Mm, <laughs> not the best gun, not... Not the toughest armor, they can't really withstand much. I think the Renaults can put up with that. The R35s could easily put up with that. The R35s are a decent armor tank with a decent gun. Panzer II as well. Bit of up on the armor, 30 armor hull, but 
guns are pea shooter. Hotchkiss H35s, 1200, Panzer 38 Ts. You only had the Panzer 3s, you had the Panzer 4s. I think this was produced mainly in 1940 though, so um, you probably wouldn't see much or if any of those because when they're produced, they probably take a while to get to the front and it might have came in the late 1940s after the Battle of France. You had the Samoas, so the, all these tanks here the French would have had because um, they didn't really produce any after 1940, so or after the Battle of France. So they had all these tanks up their sleeve, the, the Samoa S35, decent medium tank, Char B1, heavy, uh, Char D1, lots of Char D2, pretty much French had the monopoly on heavy tanks at this time, <laughs> Germany didn't have any, uh, didn't do them any good anyway. So lots of Panzer 1s down the field, uh, more Panzer 1s than anything. So really there's a battle between Renaults and uh, Panzer 1s uh, on a 1 to 1 ratio almost of the top top 4 tanks in the field. That would be an interesting to see. Um, in my opinion French had the better better equipment there. So if we even add um, let's say the British in here because they had some units here. Um, with UK it's a bit interesting t to really do this because it's probably not going to be on paper because UK had the problem of being uh, across the sea and they had trouble really landing anywhere during the war but they were there for the Battle of France and not I don't think they were there with full strength um, they're also there in Africa and also with um, yeah with the, the Normandy invasions but they didn't have uh, the full opportunity to deploy every single tank but if they did the tanks produced in this era uh, this is theoretical, more theoretical than anything because of, also because of the tanks per year produced. I didn't have the full value as I told you. But you had the Crusaders, Valentines, like I know in the Battle of Africa there was Valentines and Matildas around that time. This is 1940. And they had a few Matildas also in the Battle of France. Like these tanks are pretty damn good and if let's say UK deployed all their tanks in the field they will have 2.41 with the French superiority of the Germans and I think the French and UK had better tanks than Germany at this uh, start of the war that's my opinion anyway um, you see the medium tanks uh, going a bit more UK had a lot more mediums than lights and 13k to 6k axis tanks for that battle of France but the Germans managed managed to win that with <laughs> the blitzkrieg tactic um, and they, they won in two months, so that was an interesting one to see. Um, let's take a look at um, Barbarossa. So if you go highlight Germany and Russia and probably select up to 1941 because Barbarossa started in June 1941, ended in December, but let's just do that. You can see that the uh, superiority is 3.93 to allies per German tank obviously, and you can see the, how much Russia has the advantage in terms of numbers, 36k to 9k um, produced. This is, this is uh, not the actual numbers that were on the field, but how much they were produced, and if every tank was produced before this date went on the field, this is what it would be, because it's, it's too hard to get the other stats. Theoretical again. So uh, um, uh, coming into the battle, 1938, uh, they produced so many tanks before the war, the, the funny thing is with the Germans and the Russians and tanks, um, the German leadership or the officers, all the strategists, I guess, the, before the war, they, they were stopped from training or building tanks because of the Treaty of Versailles. So they went to Russia to learn about tanks, learn about tank tactics. And the funny thing is they perfected it and made it better with Blitzkrieg and also I guess with their tanks later on, um, but I think at the start of the war, uh, the Russians actually had had the better tanks on paper in terms of the amount of uh, firepower. But looking at this, uh, coming up to the war, 26k to 3k produced at the start, 39 uh, Russia less produced, but 370 to 131 is not a huge difference at that time. 40 already eclipsed, double almost Germany in 1940, 1941 uh, double. Um, pretty much double the Russians production and 36k versus 9 you, you wouldn't look at that a sane person wouldn't think look at that and go hmm I think I can win this battle because um, they would have known those guys studying over there would have brought back information they would have known how much how much they have produced but 
they probably would have also had some more information about the tanks that they were known to have missing parts. They were a bit unreliable. And also the leadership was was perched as well from um, Stellan being paranoid. Uh, and the, because of the failed winter war in Finland, where the Finnish totally embarrassed the Russians, it's uh, that's one of the conflicts in the war, which oh, it probably eclipses the Allied to Axis mass production differences. And this, I think, heavily influenced Germans. So they didn't really care about the numbers. They thought that they had better, better technology and all of that, and um, they were going to just win win by that. With Adolf Hitler saying. You only have to kick in the door and the whole rotten structure will come crashing down. So I didn't really have much of a high opinion of Soviet leadership tactics. They thought they were going to outdo them with technology and and smarts. But this is a big gamble. Um, so in the start of the war, you can see the Russian top tanks produced T-26, 10,000 of these light tanks. Not the greatest tanks, I guess, but they're decent. You got the BT-7s uh, and the T-34s, 3,000 of them, um, T-27s, Panzer, G, Panzer 3 G and Js, mm, nothing great. Pea shooters to the T-34s. T-34s have produced that too. Really, in this top in this top ten, T-34s three, and I don't see any German tank in this top ten that can actually take out the T-34. So you got the BT-5s. Looking down further, you have the KV-1s. As well, 1,262. Still no German tank. I can see the F1. Nope. Uh, what can go to to pretty much nothing in this field. So once they encountered the T34s, things their tanks would have no chance. And also versus the KV1s, no chance. But in reality, I think a lot of them did break down, and uh, Germans were able to to outmaneuver them, flank them, encircle them, um, take out their supply lines of fuel, etc. But if they actually fought in the one engagement, Battle of Kursk style, one line, bam, they would have totally got wiped. See how many Panzer 3s they had, lots of Panzer 2s, but they, they upped the Panzer 3s uh, since the Battle of France. So the average, um, other uh, probably useless stats of the average KMs, Allied's 39, average Axis 39, pretty much the same. Lots of light tanks on the Russian side, obviously. You can see this battle had so many more light tanks, mostly from the Russian side. Oh, look at the top four. All light Russian tanks, 20,000 of them. That's nearly half of the 36K, more than half of the 36K that the Russians had. Um, but overall, superior <laughs> tanks on paper. And But uh, the, the Germans did almost get there to the, to the outskirts of Moscow, but the, the T-34s and the... Really, the reinforcements from Georgi Jukov from the Eastern Front got pulled across and his army, full refreshed, rested, just came down and swept down. And I think they had a few of those T-34s, which the only thing that could stop them was those 88s the Germans had. Oh, um, and probably, the, uh, I'm not sure if they had the Pac-40s, but um, that's from, from my men of war knowledge. I know the Pac-40s can take the T-34s. So it's really... Um, Really a David and Goliath uh, matchup right there. Uh, let's say let's just look at all now. Let's um let's just take a select all the nations and all the years. So let's just see how the mass uh, production goes with uh, the USA involved as well. You did see it peaked at uh, 1943, and the automatic colors have decided to make this black and black. So sorry, the top one's USA. The bottom one is Germany. So on parity with the speed with uh, you, uh, the rest of the nations added. Uh, medium tanks were the most tanks produced overall. Um, going to the value production, you can see that the high, most produced tank was the T-34. Then you have the new uh, Sherman M4, trailing at 33,000. 33, that's a huge amount. Russia, again, on the third place is the 85. That's a decent tank, 23,000. M3 Lee at 20,000. Su-76 at... 12,000, M476 at 10,000, light tank T26, most produced before the war started at 10,000, um, M5, M8, heavy motor carriage. Is that a howitzer? I think it is, yep. Uh, Stumgeschütz, so Germany yeah, finally makes it in here at ninth place at 8,000. And wow, the most produced German tank versus the most produced T34, 
you get four per one ratio um, here. Look at that. And the same as here, four per one ratio for Sherman's pretty much. With 85, stomach, stomach shits needs to take out two, two, two to seven. Um, M3s as well, 2.3. So Germany makes it ninth in the entire list of most produced. And going down, Russia T70, then the Germans I Panzer IV, M10 Hellcat, BT7. Panther, decent tank at 14. That's a, I produced quite a lot of them, in fact. That's quite surprising. It's a, one of those tanks you don't see often in men of war because it's so expensive. But uh, I know that in, yeah, in production, Panther was actually quite cheap to produce but only made it to the war in 1943. Production at 18, peaked at 1944 at 3777. And obviously lost the war, 507. But there's a lot of, a lot of Panthers. So. Um, also, I just want to compare uh, the M4 T-34. So Russians and I kind of think the T-34 is like a Sherman, but I think T-34 might be a bit better. But the 76 is the 85, the M4 is a T-34. And the T-34 still won in production of tanks. So Soviets really, um, I think, won that in in the production statistics. So, um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's insane, the numbers. Um, and G Germany, uh, yeah, won France, surprisingly. So I, I think, in conclusion, I think the numbers, who has more things? Uh, is important, but may not always be important, such as like in back in the days where the Mongols conquered all these other nations because they had the better technology, which was the archer, but also the the people that were living as such a harsh environment, they were living, living on the horse with the archer and were able to conquer much bigger, bigger nations with bigger economies, bigger manpower, everything, except they just didn't have the technology, a guy on a bow, <laughs> we can shoot very full far. Um, but with, with World War Two, I think the technology was very even on both sides, relatively the same. And the Axis didn't think that, didn't think that would be the case. They thought they were smarter. They thought they had the edge in technology, where in fact, you look at the battles in France, in, in, all, in France, the French had better tanks, uh, maybe not better air. Um, in Russia, the Russians actually had better tanks at some stage, T-34s, but, but then they came up with the Tiger, but then they came up with the IS-2s, so the Russians came up with the IS-2s. So it was a bit of a race war where everyone was actually keeping up, except um, I suppose the numbers game did, did, the numbers and quality did kind of pay, play into the Western Front more where the, where the Allies didn't really keep up with the tank technology um, upgrades as well. But the tank superiority numbers still made a big part uh, part of it. Um, <clears throat> so it's really also the ability to train the soldiers quite easily with this technology. You can pre pretty much mass produce them and then mass train your civilians. But you couldn't train mass train the Mongol horse archers. Yeah, they had to live the entire life as a Mongol horse archer to be that. So who could produce more and more people? Obviously, um, would win. So I think this this uh, this was one on the books before it even started. So as you can see, just from the tank focus, Germans were totally outgunned in every front. Um, but the unmeasurable statistics of tactics and leadership did pull through in some instances, and also sometimes with the technology superiority of the Germans in some cases at some periods of time. So. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tank focus. I'll be looking at the numbers as a whole and also individually with the aircrafts, then individually with the ships, then individually with the economy and manpower. manpower. So let, let me know how, go, how what you think and um, hope you enjoyed. <laughs>